What you are looking at is perhaps the most complex mill in the world. Just one look is enough to tell that the most advanced levels of chemical, mechanical and electrical engineering would be needed to make such a machine. There is no doubt that someone seeing such a machine would wonder about the manufacturing company and the people employed by it, and would seek to obtain information about them. You may never actually see it, but this giant machine, with its flawless system, has been around on Earth for hundreds of millions of years. We each have one of these machines inside us. This machine, the digestive system, made up by organs that begin with our mouths and extend to our intestines, has been created with no earlier model to work from. Anyone possessed of reason and conscience will see the perfect features in this machine in the body and the flawless planning in its details. He or she will realize that such a complex structure must have a creator. Let us now have a closer look at this machine in our bodies. Let us witness together the sublime artistry and knowledge of Allah, the creator of all things animate and inanimate. The beginning of the mill. In this compartment, substances that enter the machine are crushed, broken down, and softened. The part of our body that corresponds to this compartment in a mill is the mouth. The teeth in our mouths have been specially created to grind and break down what we eat. The teeth are covered in enamel the hardest known organic substance, and are also highly resistant to chemical substances. Every tooth is shaped according to its job. The front teeth, for example, are sharp and tear food apart. Canine teeth are pointed and tear and break up food. The molars have been created to grind foodstuffs. If the teeth in our mouth were all the same, if we had 32 canine teeth or 32 incisors, for instance, eating would be just about impossible. Another example of the structure in our teeth is the way they are arranged in our mouths. Every tooth is in just the right place. The incisors are in the front and the molars are in the back, right where they are needed. If these were to change places, they would again become completely functionless. There is also a flawless compatibility between the upper and lower teeth, which are completely independent of one another. The teeth in both areas have been created in such a way as to fit one another when the jaw is closed. Details such as the resistant structure of teeth and their arrangement, shapes and duties being in complete harmony shows the evident planning in them. There is only one reason for the conscious behavior exhibited by cells. Like all the cells in the body, it is Almighty Allah, the creator of all things, who gives the cells that make up our teeth the characteristics they possess. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. He is Allah, the Creator, the Maker, the Giver of Form. To Him belong the most beautiful names. Everything in the heavens and earth glorifies Him. He is the Almighty, the All-Wise. Some parts of this machine work just like chemical laboratories and break down substances, entering it by affecting their chemical structures. 
Just like in this machine, the food we eat is ground up by the teeth and also subjected to a chemical attack from the fluid known as saliva. People are unaware of this fluid in their mouths during the course of their day-to-day -day lives. They generally do not think about what is secreted, nor how much. In short, very little thought is given about any detail concerning the subject. Saliva, which many people imagine to be a simple secretion, actually contains many delicate balances and is a special mixture containing various chemical substances. First and foremost, this liquid allows us to taste the food we eat. Taste molecules and foodstuffs dissolve in saliva and combine with the ends of the taste receptor nerves in the tongue. Only in this way are we able to taste what we are eating. That is why food eaten with a dry mouth seems to have no taste at all. Two separate saliva fluids with different characteristics are secreted in the mouth. One of these breaks down carbohydrates very finely and partly converts them into sugar. Bread, for example, is a carbohydrate. If you place a piece of bread in your mouth and keep it there for a few minutes without swallowing it, you will detect the sugary taste of the carbohydrate as it is broken down. The other saliva fluid has a very dense consistency. Thanks to this sticky fluid, food particles that spread all over the mouth as we eat are brought back together again. What would happen in the absence of saliva? Because of the dryness in our mouths, we would, of course, be unable to swallow what we ate, or to taste it, or to speak properly. We would be unable to eat any solid food and would have to make do with liquids. That would be a rather uncomfortable state of affairs. Saliva is secreted from three separate glands by making it easier to swallow food by moisturizing it on the one hand and on the other hand by breaking down components of food that are beneficial for the body by means of the chemical substances it contains. The enzyme amylase in saliva is a chemical specially produced for this task and breaks starch down into sugar. The tongue also plays an important role in mechanical grinding not only does the tongue have a very sensitive taste measurement property, it also rolls food up in the mouth and thus facilitates its passage into the throat. There are some 10,000 taste buds on the surface and sides of the tongue. These are sensitive to four different tastes, bitter, sweet, salty, and sour. These taste buds allow us to distinguish between the various foods we eat every day without ever confusing them to the extent that the tongue can even distinguish a taste it has never encountered before. Thus, we never perceive the taste of a cucumber as being bitter like that of a grapefruit or imagine that a cake is salty. Moreover, taste buds perceive the same taste and the same food in billions of people. The concepts of sweet, salty, or sour are the same for everyone. Some scientists describe this ability of the tongue as an extraordinary chemical technology. What would happen if there were fewer taste buds in the tongue? Then, we could never taste the food we eat. We would have no idea of the taste of something sweet, or of meat, or of any other foodstuff. Whatever we ate, it would all taste the same. Eating would no longer be a pleasurable blessing, but would become a task we had to perform in order to stay alive. Yet that is not the case. By the help of special taste buds in the tongue, we are able to distinguish the flavors of everything we eat. That allows us to take pleasure from eating.